Hello and welcome to the Maple Grove City Report. I'm Dave Kaiser. Thanks for joining us along with Heidi Nelson, Maple Grove City Administrator. You see she's got the stacks of paper <laughs> here ready to talk about a lot that's going on in town. Yeah. It's a busy time of the year, but a council meeting that was rather short, believe yeah. it or not, about 37 minutes long. So we'll give you a recap of that here in just a second. Changing of the seasons in Maple Grove, so a lot going on with the election and some things that are getting us a little close to winter, believe mm -hmm. it or not. So we'll tell you about those. First, the meeting on the 17th, again, about 37, 38 minutes long. One item from the consent agenda that we just wanted to make extra note of, you have a new deputy fire chief. Tell us about Patrick. Yeah, so Patrick Ferens is coming to us um, from the Kansas City area. So um, has been in the fire service there for many years and doing similar type of work um, that we're looking for here. Uh, has some family connections back here in Minnesota. Okay. So this was kind of a nice move for, for him and his family. And so this is, um, he's following on Marilyn Arnland's position here. So we'll be welcoming Patrick to the team on October 8th. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Welcome to yes. Patrick. Now it's not often that you have a council meeting that has this much fun in it, but right. the next three items you're <laughs> going to want to hear these because yeah. this is some fun. And there were some people in the crowd to enjoy it as well. Mm -hmm. The first was the Maple Grove Moments Photo Contest. Give us a little background of that contest mm -hmm. and again how it's used. And we have a few of the winning pictures here that we'll show yep. you as we talk about this. And then what happened at last night's council meeting as well. Yeah, so the city has done this photo contest for a number of years and does it twice a year. So we try to capture kind of both, you know, the summer and the winter months mm -hmm. uh, here in Maple Grove. And number of different categories this year. Um, the categories were youth uh, going together. Uh, going wild, going strong, and going natural. So um, an opportunity to capture a lot of the different things that are going on in Maple Grove with those categories. So um, we get the submissions. Uh, we transitioned the program completely online, I think, mm -hmm. it, with the last round of it that we did. Um, so that's really been uh, kind of a slick uh, way for photographers to submit their photos. We have seen an uptick in the number of photos that are submitted. Um, there's an online voting process that occurs and so many of the awards that were um, given out last night, uh, there's a viewer's choice that was in-flight snack and that was the, the hummingbird picture right. that scrolled through here. Mm -hmm. And then um, the there's a panel, uh, you sit on that panel to right. select uh, the top three in each category and they each get um, recognition for that, uh, that submission. And, and we really do use these pictures in yeah. all of our publications, our newsletter, city website, uh, our social media efforts, park and rec brochures, all those kinds of things. And so it's really fun to actually have pictures, you know, versus using something from Photoshop or yep, something available exactly. online. Mm -hmm. We have uh, kind of a real time sampling of pictures of things here in Maple Grove. So really appreciate all the photographers that came forward to contribute to this process. We'll do it again come winter. Um, but this was a, a great collection of photos uh, for capturing summer in Maple Grove. And many of the winners in attendance at the council meeting and they got their picture taken yes. as well so yeah. they could document this big occurrence. Yes. So congratulations to all of the winners. Next was the Maple Grove Ambassadors Program. And we talk about that a lot during Maple Grove days. Yeah. But not a lot during the rest of the year, but here they had a chance to come to the council. What did they talk about? What was this opportunity? Yeah, so we have our new ambassador, ambassadors, uh, Madison Nathy, Sophie Klons, and Katia Kath Cuthbert. Um, they are all actually seniors this year up at Maple Grove Senior. Um, so kind of a different experience than last year. Um, I think most, I think all the girls were in college, and okay. so a little bit less available, you know, during the week. Uh, so we were able to have them come in, and this was kind of their first official visit. Um, after the coronation in July to visit with the council about what they've been doing, our kind of their whole process of going through um, the ambassador program and then coronation being selected and then what they've been working on and, and participating in since then. So nice opportunity to visit. We've had a number of opportunities to interact with them, National Night Out, Maple Grove Days, all those kinds of things. So right. I've gotten to know Madison, Sophie, and Katya. Um, so this was just a nice uh, opportunity for them to come in and visit with the council. And just a little kidding about what's coming up in February, right? The mm -hmm. uh, jumping into the lake yeah. for Special Olympics. So Polar plunge yes. uh, for Saturday, <laughs> I think, in February. Right. And so they always participate in that. And 
and get involved and so looking forward to that event so they as have well. a couple months to get ready yeah. for that occurrence third fun thing at the meeting was related to the canine program mm -hmm. and some very nice donations give yes. us an overview of the program itself and the donations that help out yeah so this donation came um, kind of as a result of a community uh, engagement event that occurred uh, in July uh, thanks to Brothers Meats and Seafoods they're located over there in Grove Square mm -hmm. um, they uh, held an event uh, the mayor was part of that it was in the dunk tank for that event oh, very good. and they raised uh, four thousand dollars towards the canine program and they went around to um, Brothers Meats went around to a lot of the local businesses to get contributions and then there were was dollars raised at the event in and of itself good. and then um, best the best which is an organization here in Minnesota that works on um, best for law enforcement uh, rate provided another donation of $1,000. So all in all, $5,000 for this one. So um, we haven't been doing a lot of marketing around fundraising, you know, for the canine program. Mm -hmm. We have a program established. Um, we're gonna be doing a little bit more proactive work around that, but okay. really the community has stepped up just by kind of word of mouth and, and yeah. us putting, you know, information out that with Kalo being out there and Kalo was at the council meeting again. He's getting mm -hmm. to be yes. quite a pro <laughs> right. at posing with the city council Please up take there. My picture, right? right? <laughs> and behaving really well at the council council meetings um, so that's been kind of fun uh, good training for him as well all right so thank you to those two groups for the donations mm -hmm. next item was community development we've talked a little bit about this in the past it's moving ahead in the process yep Beehive Homes. Give yes. us a little background. What is Beehive Homes? Where might it go? Yep, so this is a project uh, right at the corner of Weaver Lake and Fish Lake Road. They're just kind of directly south across the street from Boston Scientific. Mm -hmm. um, so this was a, a site that has been, um, you know, it's been vacant for quite some time. It had been owned by a church. I think at some point, you know, they had thought about building something there and um, moved on from those plans. And so now um, they have been working with a um, kind of an assisted living memory care facility, uh, Beehive Homes, to construct the facility there. Um, just directly due east of um, Crosswinds Church sure. there. Right. So, um, and it backs up, of course, to a, a single family neighborhood just to the south of there. Uh, great site from visibility perspective, tough site from an access and traffic right. perspective, a lot of traffic on Weaver and Fish Lake. So some concerns there. Um, basically, they'll be drawing their access off of one road, uh, one driveway off of Fish Lake, kind of as far south to the, on that site as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, you know, from that perspective, we've tried to minimize those access points. From a use perspective, you can't get a really lower traffic volume type use. And so from, right. from that, I think it fits good on the site. Uh, really a residential style looking building. They have a number of projects around the metro area and they do a really nice job quality work. And, and it really kind of has that residential feel and um, some nice landscaping to the site as well. So this one um, gained a uh, concept plan and development stage plan and Zoning, so okay. they'll be good to go after this resolution or approval will come back at the next meeting. But um, yeah, good support for, for this project and a nice addition to the community. And as I understand it, this has two phases. Yep. So there'll be a first building that yep. they're looking to start right now and then another one down the road and about, what, 20 units yeah. approximately per each? 20 units to start, overall about 42 units. Okay. So um, that first building will probably move forward. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to try to get in the ground yet this fall or okay. if they'll wait till the spring. but. Um, yeah, 20 units to start. Very good. Yep. So that was the one community development item to be discussed. There were a couple other updates given. Mm -hmm. One was zoning text amendments. Yep. Some nitty gritty things that yeah. happened at the city and the related to small cells and landscaping ordinance. Just a quick idea of what those two topics were. Yeah, so we continue to follow along. There's been a lot of legislative changes and actually a lot of action at the federal level as well about small cell, cell technology right. and what the city, what cities have, uh, what they have the authority to regulate or mm -hmm. not. So we continue to work on those issues and making sure that our ordinances um, are in line with state statute. And then um, we've had some issues with um, you know, uh, properties that are moving forward to development, maybe some tree removal um, before um, they were granted approval to do so and, and maybe that shouldn't have occurred so we're sure. looking at putting um, kind of some penalties in for, for that type of activity and so both of these zoning text amendments will come forward likely in October um, for council discussion. 
other items in community development that were brought up were some expansion talk. This is mm -hmm. always good for the City of Maple Grove to hear about. Give us a list of those that might be looking to expand. Yeah, so we have been working with Pallet Services up off of 90th Avenue. They're looking at doing some expansion up there, kind of an industrial use. Mm -hmm. And then um, the Arbor Lakes Business Park certainly is moving forward. They have, you know, a loom is moving into the, the building right up along Elm Creek Boulevard. They'll occupy that entire building uh, with their corporate headquarters. But the building to the south uh, is a multi anticipated to be a multi-tenant right. building so we've been talking with a, a business about moving into that building so Excellent. lots of interest and lots of activity out there uh, for the Arbor Lakes Business Park. One other quick to mention is Boston Scientific we've talked yep. a little bit about them and a child care facility right yep. is what they're continuing to look at? Yeah so they have child care facility there they're just making some changes kind of okay. to the parking and maybe some of the drop-off area there. Mm -hmm. We do uh, we have been having discussions with them about making changes to some of their signage okay. on the site as well as on the building that one Will probably come forward after um, some of these parking lot changes. Very good. Then yep. one other area of community development looking ahead to the future is some of the development in the north mm -hmm. and northwest area of the city and you have continued community meetings. Yes. Uh, when are these meetings? How can people get involved? Sure. So well right now we've really been focused on meeting with the landowners and the okay. various stakeholders up there on a, in the 105th area um, and so we anticipate once we get kind of through this first phase there would be some more open house okay. style meetings probably moving in through the winter months here um, but right now we're really just trying to do that one-on-one -on -one meeting with the stakeholders landowners to kind of understand mm -hmm. what their timelines are what their interests are um, and so that we're taking that into consideration as we um, consider kind of the more um, defined biz development plans for that area so okay. that one's moving forward um, we're going to be doing some kickoff about having doing again some of the same activity master planning up in the northwest quadrant of the right. city so mm -hmm. kind of all the way up to our northwest borders so again same process Process, meeting with landowners, stakeholders, and then some open house type meetings good. to follow. And we will keep you up to date when those dates do get set. Let's move over to Public Works Engineering, a few things related to the roadways around mm -hmm. town. First, let's talk about seal coating in 2017. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of a redo or yeah. some extra work that needs to be done. What is happening? Now? Yeah, we're going to be going back into some of those areas and kind of putting down a special fog coat on some of those areas where we've had some issues with some of the the, the chip seal uh, in those areas. So uh, folks might notice some of that in their neighborhoods, and okay. there'll be some signage associated with that. Very good. And yep. then back to the freeway, we're talking noise again. Yep. Just as that process moves ahead, what's the next step? Yeah, so we have a meeting. Actually, it's tonight as okay. we tape this. That mm -hmm. uh, the next meeting is tonight. There's more to come. Um, tonight was really about sharing some data that's been collected out there about noise along the corridor and of course this is related to that I-94 unbonded overlay project with right. the Brockton interchange construction mm -hmm. um, so they're looking at the addition of some noise walls through the corridor through Maple Grove so more to come on that but um, if you're interested and you're watching. I don't know if this is going to get up on the air this yeah, afternoon. Yeah, may but not be that fast. Quick meeting tonight. But there might be more to come. There's more in to the come in the well. future. And if you're interested, just give a call up to the engineering department, and they can get you that information. Fantastic. Yep. That is about it for the meeting on the 17th. One last item was forms, but we're going to jump mm -hmm. to the next part of our show here and give you some of the community updates. And we'll talk about the forms there. In fact, as we're taping this today, there's one coming up tonight. tonight. So if you're interested in learning about candidates. Tonight is the night, but they will be replayed. So yep. tell us about some of the forms that are coming up. Yep, so tonight uh, is, the can is the candidate form for may the mayoral race here in Maple Grove, as well as the two council member seats that are up. Um, so 6.30 to 7.30 up at the Government Center. Folks are welcome to attend. Mm -hmm. But as you mentioned, it will be played back um, on, on the local channels here. And then um, September... Uh, 20th, so then tomorrow night, uh, North Metro Mayors is hosting their candidate forum, and this is for District 34A and 34B state uh, rep races, 6.30 to 7.30. Again, they'll be played back. And then uh, rounding it out on September 26th, we have another candidate forum for those same um, state rep races for District 34A and 34B. That one's hosted by the League of Women Voters um, and the North Hennepin Chamber. Wonderful. So um, that one again, 6.30 to 7.30. So kind of rapid fire here, candidate yep. forums, but tis the season yep. and so uh, watch for those on, on the local channels here. Very good. And talking about the election season, and you're getting ready at City Hall, the government center, yep. to have people come in and vote. Tell yeah. us about this early voting process, how it works, where it is at the city. Yeah, so round two of absentee voting. Yep. Uh, we're getting ready for the general. It kicks off this Friday, September 21st. Yeah, so, hard to believe. Yeah, so if you want to come out, 
come out and vote early for the, in the general election, you can start doing that this Friday. For, the, uh, for about the next three weeks, uh, up until the middle of October, we'll be upstairs on the second floor of the Government Center, okay. same place that we hosted it for the primary. Right. Um, as we get to the end of October, we're going to transition down to the Emergency Operations Center just to accommodate the larger volume of okay. absentee voters that we do anticipate. So this just kind of allows us to use our existing staff to administer absentee mm -hmm. uh, well the volume's a little bit lower so um, yeah if you know folks want to come in and vote they just have to fill out an application to to vote absentee um, it's no excuse absentee so right. you don't have to tell us a story about why mm -hmm. you're gonna be out of town yes it doesn't matter anymore <laughs> right. um, and then as you get closer to the election um, I think it's within seven days uh, your ballot can just be fed right into the reader it doesn't have to be the mail process so um, you're welcome to come on up to City Hall and vote. And hours to get that done, regular hours of yep. the government center, is that yes, correct? Yes, that's okay. correct. Yep. All right, so you can go we on the city's have, website to find that out. Yeah, we'll have some extended hours getting closer to the election. I believe we do one Saturday. Okay. But um, maybe we'll cover that at our yeah, next we'll meeting. Yeah, we'll let you go yep. the next time, uh, let you know the next time we get together. Other fun things happening in town. How about mayor for a day? Mm -hmm. If you've always wished you could sit in the mayor's seat, now might be your chance, but you might have to be a young one to do this. Yes. Tell us about that program. Yeah, so we participated in this last year and we actually had a couple of our local students. This is open to fourth, fifth, and sixth graders um, that were recognized. Uh, we had them come in to the council meeting and read their essay and then they got the picture taken. It was kind of a fun evening. Um, so this is hosted through the League of Minnesota Cities. Maple Grove's a member of the League of Minnesota mm -hmm. Cities. Um, and so uh, again, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. Information is available on our website about this opportunity, and then we'll be reaching out to some of the local schools to encourage participation. So, Very good. kind of a fun activity. All right, kids get at writing those essays. Yes. Job openings. You don't often think of the city as a place for some great jobs, yep. but you do have some great jobs. We Tell do. us about some of the openings that are now available. Yeah, so we're now recruiting for a combination plans examiner, building inspector. Our level of building activity remains incredibly high, mm -hmm. um, and so there's actually actually been some recent news coverage of you know how our city's keeping up and and this is an area that I think struggles in terms of the the workforce sure. and the, the pool of candidates okay. um, so we're out to recruit for this position that one's open through this Friday the 21st at 4 30 p.m. Um, we're also recruiting right now for a police records management technician um, that one's open through September 4th at the end of the day or September 24th at the end of the day mm -hmm. and then um, also on the council agenda Monday night was the authorization to recruit for a new Director of Community and Economic Development. Um, this is following on uh, Dick Edwards' retirement at the end of May, and mm -hmm. we've taken some time to kind of look at staffing and structure and have repositioned things a bit, combining back our, our community and economic development functions of the city. Uh, so we're out to recruit for that. That one's open through October 12th, so a little okay. bit longer time frame there. But all information available on our website about all these positions. Excellent. Yep. Well, it's a sure sign that winter is about here because we're talking stats from the state fair. Yes. So not just previewing it, but recapping it. And from the city of Maple Grove standpoint, transportation went fantastic. Tell it us did. about some of those numbers. Yeah, so fair had record attendance and yep. our bus service did the same thing. Good. So we had uh, 27, over 27,000 riders um, that great. took the bus from Maple Grove. Um, and that is an increase of almost 3,000 rides over 2017. So about a 12% increase mm -hmm. uptick in that transit. Um, so very popular. Uh, and of course, we just do the weekends and then Labor Day. Um, but yeah, great resource for our residents and very uh, economical way to get to the fair. You bet. Yep. Age-friendly open house. We've talked about this in preview fashion a couple times, and it is actually coming up on Thursday the 20th. So it's yep. coming up quick, quickly here. Give us a recap of the age-friendly concept. Mm -hmm. What is being discussed and what might people see after this meeting if they can't make it to the 20th? Sure, so this is a concept that we've been really working on for a couple years here. We first kind of did a resolution of support um, to get into the program uh, and then proceeded with kind of a needs analysis, community engagement process to identify where the opportunities and the needs were in the community to address um, kind of the various uh, different areas of, of becoming an age-friendly community. Mm -hmm. And now uh, the most recent action by the council was to adopt the work plan um, that has been developed by the, the committee that's working on this. So okay. this is really an opportunity at this open house to take a look at that work plan and understand what the various components of that are. Again, it's really looking at kind of programs, policies, and our built environment here in Maple Grove and how those um, those things address um, the aging community. So um, opportunities to get involved. If you're interested in getting involved with one other, you know, aspect of that work plan, um, opportunities to come out and look at that. Yeah. And then, you know, if 
you're if you're not able to attend the open house, certainly Chris Orlock over in the Parks and Recreation Good. Department would be happy to to talk with you. Uh, open house 2.30 to 5 tomorrow night over at the Community Center. That's on September 20th. Very yep. good. All right, let's talk about the Community Center, some of the things that are going on inside and mm -hmm. outside. Number one, inside pools. Yes. Almost back open. Yep. Tell us about the pool maintenance. Yep. Another few days here okay. we're reopening on Monday, September 24th, and they got the, they had the floors redone. I have not seen them, but I've heard that they're pretty exciting because they added some color okay. um, and Very some different nice. elements to the floors with nice. this replacement. So that's kind of an exciting piece. Um, it's been a little, I've been over the community center for some meetings. It's been a little quiet in there. So mm -hmm. um, I think everybody's looking forward to getting the pools back open and the activity uptick there. The other side of the community center is where you find the ice. How about mm -hmm. skating? People can do that now indoors. Yes, absolutely. And this Friday night, September 21st, we have um, open skating from 715 to 845. And then there's a 50% discount off of a mission if you wear orange that night Very to nice. kind of celebrate the fall. Sounds good. Yep. And the other thing with the fall is the farmer's market shifting gears going mm -hmm. into more of the fall products. Tell us about the times and dates to get to the market. Yep. Outside market um, continues every Thursday through October. 25th we do trim up the hours here starting October 4th to 3 to okay. 6 just because of things getting darker a little bit sooner but all of the you know uh, fall produce is there and lots of the vendors hang in with us all the way through October so Great. make sure you stop on out yeah fun a fun event yep. let's talk finally about fall cleanup it is that time of the year where mm -hmm. things are gonna start coming off the trees and so on and so forth so how does the city help out and get people cleaning up. Yep, so this is um, a great time to clean out the garage, shed, basement, uh, all those kinds of things. We offer curbside pickup on Monday, October 1st, and then the cleanup day it's, uh, on Saturday, October 6th from 8 to noon at the Public Works facility, so that's more of a drop off. Yep. Information available on our website. Um, the curbside pickup does require some advance uh, registration for that, and some of the items, if you wanna get rid of them, do require payment, but um, this is a great service, great opportunity to get out there and clean up what's hanging around around yeah, from the so summer. That extra stuff in the garage and again what's in the yard you can do it at those couple dates and then again the drop off site for leaves and yep. all of that will be kicking in the high gear here. Yeah soon. yep and that's open generally um, you know I think usually all the way through November 1st yep. we kind of follow along a little bit with the weather just okay. to see how it's going. Sure. I know we've had times where uh, the fall has been very extended, uh, so <laughs> yes. uh, we'll follow along with that, but generally around November 1. All right, very good. Well, Heidi, thanks for the information mm -hmm. again today, and again, a short meeting on the 17th, but the next one is coming up on October 1st. Let's give you that information here and some other information about the city. Website, we've mentioned a number of times, so again, those job openings, other activities in the city, go to the city's website, maplegrovemn.gov. Next meeting is on October 1st at 7.30 at the Government Center, phone number down below. And our viewer response line, 533-1710. Questions or comments for the program, we would be happy to answer those. For Heidi Nelson, I'm Dave Kaiser. Thanks again for joining us.